Hello, everybody. This is AK. I'm back. So I read a report by Bloomberg that say U.S. banks are paying up to protect their cash holdings from sinking further, and to safeguard against future runs on deposits. Right. So this is a report by Bloomberg, and that about how big and small financial institutions. Started doing this even before the U.S. banking system crisis in March, right? And、uh, it shows how fixed deposits or what they call time deposits,、uh, which are in amounts of larger than U.S. one hundred thousand dollars, have risen by six hundred seventy-five billion U.S. dollars, and、uh, that's a large sum of money. It's mind-boggling. And of course, we know that it is expensive for banks to maintain fixed deposits or their what they call time deposits in the U.S. But the U.S. banks、um, seem willing to pay the price, right, to help maintain an extra buffer of cash, especially when they are seeing rapid deposit outflows. There's rapid deposit outflows from the U.S. banks, right, and.、Um, This has been going on for the past eighteen months since the Fed started hiking interest rates. Cash has been flowing out of the banking system, the U.S. banking system, in search of higher yielding alternatives. And、uh, as the Fed has pledged to keep interest rates higher for longer, deposits would continue to leave. So the banks are trying to lock customers'、uh, funds. By offering them higher interest on、uh, time deposits, fixed deposits, and that's costly to the banks, right? But they don't seem to have a choice, right?、Um, because as deposits leave, the risk that bank reserves would will deplete is increasing. So they said they seem to be having a liquidity crisis, right?、Uh, or not a crisis yet, but an an issue.、Uh, and if it's not addressed, it will. Probably become a crisis, right? And they, when they did a survey, a recent survey in August, it shows that roughly eighty percent of respondents said that their institutions prefer to hold additional reserves above what is the lowest comfortable level. So they are just holding cash now. Just holding cash is a matter of survival. You know, if there's a run on the bank, I can imagine why you would want to hold more cash, right? And、uh, scarcity has also caused problems in the past, most notably in September 2019, right? So Wall Street strategists have estimated that the banking system's aggregate lowest comfortable level of reserves is somewhere around 2.5 trillion U.S. dollars. Oh my goodness, that's a lot of money. And、um, now the thing is, we see this problem with liquidity in the U.S. system, banking system, right? How the banks are hoard hoarding cash, right, to preempt and possibly another run, right? And so, how is this different from Singapore? Because then people will be wondering, what about Singapore? Because in the Bloomberg report, they also say something like, we see this trend. As a key risk for Singapore banks, and that's the trend of deposits leaving the banking system in search of higher interest, right? So they see this as a key risk for Singapore banks as well, which would likely mute the benefits from higher interest rates, which I've been saying provides a tailwind for Singapore banks because the higher interest rates has given Singapore banks earnings a boost, and、um, The higher for longer rate environment should allow Singapore banks to continue to reprice their loan portfolio higher, and support their net interest margins, right? But、um, Bloomberg seems to think that there is a risk that deposits might leave Singapore's banks、uh, in search of higher interest rates, higher yields, higher returns. And、uh, in one of my recent videos, I did say that the CASA ratio, while still still strong, right?、Uh, we are seeing a reduction in CASA. There is current accounts and savings accounts money in favor of、uh, fixed deposits. So it's now about fifty fifty, right? 
and um, as but it doesn't mean that money is leaving the banking system in Singapore in search of higher use elsewhere. You know, um, if we look at the Singapore banks, I think they are flush with liquidity. Right, UOB in their recent report say they are flush with liquidity. And earlier this year, there was a newspaper headline that says Singapore banks are so flush with cash that they are struggling to work out what to do with it. And DBS Bank at that time was reported to have lent uh, Singapore Central Bank, MAS, uh, US $22 billion because it could not find enough opportunities to put the money to work. Right, and uh, they say the liquidity surplus in Singapore's uh, bank DBS underscores how the rich city state has become a beneficiary of Asia's wealthy, shifting their money to a perceived safe haven. Right, and um, <laughs> this is very strange, right? Uh, what Bloomberg said earlier about a liquidity. Uh, draining from the banking system in the US. It is a key risk for Singapore banks as well. And we don't see this happening in Singapore. Um, the liquidity surplus in DBS, right, is also something that we see in uh, UOB and OCBC, right? Because if the banks can find ways of growing money more quickly, they wouldn't be lending money to the MAS, right? So like MAS standing facility accepts overnight deposits at a yield of between 2.7% to 4%, uh, while a loan to customers can range from high 3% to for a mortgage to over 27% on credit cards per year, right? So, uh, and for DBS, they have so much money they didn't know what to do with it, right? So they actually said um, total deposits climbed 31% between December 2019 and March 2023, while loans only increased 60% in the same period. So they have a lot of surplus cash. And at UOB, lending to MAS is one of the bank's deployment options for surplus cash, right? And it's um, non-restricted balances with uh, the central bank jumped 40% year on year last year. And OCBC uh, also saw the money market placement and reverse repurchase agreement with central bank at $28.4 billion in 2022, up from $20.3 billion a year ago, which means it actually went up by about 40% as well. So I think with Singapore banks, uh, liquidity isn't an issue. Liquidity isn't an issue, although we have to uh, be realistic enough to recognize that funding cost has caught up, right? As the amount of money in CASA, current account savings account, has reduced and more money is being shifted into fixed deposits. So funding cost has caught up. So we are likely to see some net interest margin compression, which would affect net interest income. That one is being realistic, but I don't think we should go around like chicken little and scream the sky is falling for the Singapore banks, DPS, OCBC, and UOB, because we don't have that kind of problem that the US banks have. So which banks to invest in? Uh, well, you decide, okay? If AK can talk to himself, so can you. Bye-bye.